Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This tutorial will be a summary and optimization of our current inventory system. We will take a look on every function and how we can optimize it. So let's go. Let's start with our item structure. I optimized it so we have only the necessary informations, the name, the amount, the stack amount, the thumbnail itself, the actor as an item class, the usable and the valid status. Next up we have our inventory itself, so our inventory widget. Let's open this up as well. Inside this one, as you remember, we have our inventory, the storage and the hotbar. The size boxes are optimized so that they fit up the content here. Let's go to the graph and let's start up with the first function. Of course, we have our create inventory function. We have the clear children function for the storage grid. Very important that we can clear up every time we open the chest. Then we have of course the loop where we create our item slots. We have the move cases that we set and the index of every item slot of course. And we add up the children's, so the item slots to the grid. In case of the inventory, the storage and the hotbar. Next up we have our update inventory function where we just update the inventory. So we go through every item slot as you can see. We get the children and set the amount and the thumbnail to update it. Next up we have the set arrays function. Gets very full here. So we start up with the set arrays call where we have our split input here as a boolean. We cast of course to the game instance. Inside the game instance as you remember we have the inventory, the storage and the hotbar as you can see. So the first branch will ask if we want to split an item. Default we have the false case where we build up every move case like this one here. On true we want to split an item. Also on here we want to switch on the move case. Zero is inventory, one is storage, three is the hotbar. So we want to split it like this one here from the select item index. So this is how we implement the split item function again in our current system. From there on we go to the move item function. Let's open up this as well. Where we have the select array, the drop array and the move between input here. We get the select item index, the drop item index. We get it and set it to the current select item and drop item as you can see. Of course we get the item as well from select and drop. We have multiply branches. The first branch is does we move between something, so the inventory for example and the storage. Next up we have the condition for the select item index and the drop item index if they are equal. If true we do nothing. If false we go on to the next branch. The next condition is we check the drop item slot. If it's valid, that means there's another item, so we have to switch it. If not, we can just place the item from the select one to the drop one. On true, the next condition is are the names equal, so we can stack something. On false, we just switch the items. On true, that means we can stack the item. We have the next condition that checks is the stack amount full. On true, we just create a new stack. On false, we stack it. Next we open up our append item function. This function was usually in the item class. I will show you later how we can call this function. So we have our inventory, the item itself and the item actor as an input. The first for loop will check is the item already in our inventory with the first branch here where we compare the names. The second branch is is the stack amount still bigger than the amount of the item itself. Then we can set it. If not, we will continue with the second for loop where we just add the item. This will replace our add item function so we can completely remove it with this function here. And then we check is the item valid, so the item actor. If yes, we want to destroy it. If not, we continue with the update inventory function like this one. Next up, there's a new reduce item function where we want to reduce something. 
pretty simple as well. We cast to our game instance, get the inventory, get the item that we want to reduce. This is why we have this index as an input here. We want to check when we reduce something, is it zero? If yes, we just remove it from the inventory. If not, we reduce the amount and then we just, of course, update the inventory again. The last function is our classic split item function. The first branch is, of course, is the amount over one, so at least two. Otherwise, we can't split it, of course. On true, we go to the for loop and find the item. Then we want to split the amount, as you can see. If you want to take a closer look on this function, the split item function was integrated in part seven and the set arrays and move item function was included in part eight. So let's close this one and open up our item slot. Nothing special here. Let's go to the graph directly. We just have this use item function currently and some overrides here I will show you later. So the current use item function, we check the move case and switch on this. I prefer that I only can use items from the hotbar. If you want to use only from the inventory, you can connect the zero case here but then you have to replace, of course, the hotbar with the inventory. So you can decide from which part you want to use the item. Of course, we cast to our game instance, then we get the preferred storage or inventory or hotbar. Then we, of course, get the item that we selected. We check, is the item valid? Is the item usable? Then we cast to our character. We have the use item function. We can take a look on this as well. So let's open up our character here. The use item is just, as you can see, in child actor component. That is in the hand of the character where we can use the item. If you want to take a closer look on this as well, this is part of the tool system tutorial, link is in the description. So let's go on with the use item function. We want to set the child actor class. Then we set the actor enable collision to false. We cast to our item class, we call the use item function. I will show you later inside the item class what the use item function does. So basically when we click on an item slot and want to use the item, we just call the use item function of the item itself. So in this way you can decide on the item itself what the item should do. Also we have on the on mouse button down, we first check is the mouse button down the right mouse button. On false, we just want to drag and drop it. So with the left mouse button, of course, as you can see. Otherwise, we check is shift down on true. If not, we just so click the right mouse button. Of course, you can change this however you want. This is just an example. We want to call the use item function. Otherwise, we cast to our character because we want to split the item. So I decided when you hold shift and right click, you can split it. Of course, you can change it again however you want. Then we want to set the select item index and the move case. And then we call our set arrays function with the split on true. Also, we have the on drag detected. Nothing special here as well. We check is the image valid. Then we cast to our player, get the widget. We set the select item index as well as the move case, of course. We create the drag item widget here, get the thumbnail and set it. And then we create this drag and drop operation. The drag and drop functionality was included in part four of the tutorial series. The last part is the on drop function. If you want to take a closer look, this is part eight of the tutorial where we want to call our set arrays function without the split. So this was our item slot. The last part is our item class itself. I created already the child's here. So right click, create child blueprint class as you remembered. Let's open this up. I reduced many things here. So we have only the item itself as a variable and we have no functions here, only the interact and a custom event. So let's start up with the interact. We cast to our instance. 
we get our inventory, cast to our third person character in this case, and then we call our append item function where we just connect the widget, of course, and the inventory itself from this one here, as you can see, we have the item that we connected, so the item itself and the self-reference for the item actor. We have the static mesh as a root component and in box collision. The use item function is just empty here. So we create it for the child's so that we can, for example, open up this child here, this book, where we can just call the use item event so that we have a function for the book, for example, if we want that. The last part is of course our third person character where we call the functions and begin play. We create the inventory widget, we cast to our instance, we get our inventory in our hotbar, get the length and create the inventory with the move case zero for the inventory and the move case two for the hotbar. As well, we get the grid and the hot grid, set the widget as a variable and add it to the viewport. The input action itself call an custom event down here that checks is the player controller valid. It checks is the inventory already open. We cast to the game instance. If not, we update the inventory. We set the input to game and UI, show the mouse cursor, set the visibility of the inventory box and the inventory text to true and set the Boolean inventory open to true. If the inventory is already open, we of course set the game mode back to game only, set the mouse cursor to invisible again, make the inventory box and the text invisible, and set the inventory open to false again. So this was the summary and the optimization of our inventory system. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions, please let me know and yeah, goodbye.